Allah Rabbul Izzah says, any time we tested Ibrahim with certain words and certain tasks and certain missions, Ibrahim perfected and excelled in all our tests. And the tests of Ibrahim didn't start middle ages or old age. It started at, at a very young age. He opened his eyes. Can you imagine opening your eyes and around you it's an ocean of shirk? idols and images and vain statues that man the, the one that allah created to be his vice gerent the best of allah's creation is now humbling himself to stones so in this climate ibrahim is born imagine his father is the maker of it his father is the fashion of the idols it's bad for business if you go against it we gave Ibrahim advancement of thought and logic. We opened his heart and gave him maturity of ideas and understanding. So at a young infant age, like he started to look around and he says, what is this? So Ibrahim said, why is his ears so big? So Ibrahim laughed. They say he laughed. And what's this one? This is the God of God. So Ibrahim used to climb on top of them. As he grows, there is a yearning inside for the true Lord. Looking around, he can't find what he wants. And he used to put ropes on the, on the necks of the idols and drag them. You know, like if his dad said, go take this to somewhere, he used to, he used to drag him on the street like that. So, and and it, it was bad for his dad's business, you must understand. So he's searching, he's searching. And his search finished from these stones and stuff. He realized these are nothing. He looked up at night and he saw a star. Maybe that's my Lord. You know, it is outside of here. It is extraterrestrial. It is shiny. It's glowing. It's lighting. Place up. And then they say it was the star of Venus. It sits pretty quick. You know, the planet there. So just when it set, he said, I don't want a part-time God. And then he saw the moon in its full glory. And when the moon set, it can't be the moon. Then he saw the sun, full glorious, blazing, scorching sun, household of energy and power. This is my Lord. And when the sun set, it clicked. Ah, subhanallah. He said, no, no, the one who is Rabb is the one who created that and that and that. I have found my Lord. He is the one that he created all this. And to him I surrender and submit in absolute unity in Tawheed. Ibrahim became a Muwahid. So he went to his people. What are these images, these idols to which you show so much devotion? And they didn't have any answer. So they said, we saw our fathers do this, so we are doing it. Laqad, verily you are yourselves and your fathers in manifest error. You were wrong, your fathers before you were wrong. Big thing to say for a little kid. So Ibrahim alayhi salam in his heart says, I will fix your idols for you. So then came the big day of festivity. And traditions say they used to go outside the city. Um, and there they used to, you know, celebrate their special day. And everyone in town used to go. So they came to Ibrahim alayhi salam. Let's go. He said, I am ill. So they went. And then Ibrahim alayhi salam comes to the temple. All the gods, the idols. He asked them, why don't you speak? So he took the axe and started swinging. Ibrahim shattered them to bits. All of it. Except for the biggest one. And he put the axe on its neck and went home. So when they came in the afternoon, who has done this to our gods? So they said, we heard a young lad talking about them. And they call him Ibrahim. Bring him to the people. Let's have a public trial. Let's justify his punishment publicly. And they say, Rahim, did you do this? 
No, that big one did it. Ask him if he can speak. So they looked and they said, Ibrahim, you know they can't speak. Woe be unto you. Then why are you worshipping them besides Allah Rabbul Izzah? Don't you see that they can't do anything? I've just broken him to pieces. He can't save himself. So what's he going to do for you? They said, burn him. So they started to collect firewood. They burnt this fire and that if a bird flew over it, it would burn down dead. They put Ibrahim salam on a catapult. And they sh were going to shoot him inside. And Ibrahim alayhi salam is there. And some of the narrations, Jibreel comes to him. And he says, Ya Ibrahim, do you want me to help you? He says, no. The one who can see me, he will help me. And they opened the catapult and Ibrahim alayhi salam went and he said, Hasbi Allahu wa ni'm al wakil. The narration is in Bukhari Sharif. So as Ibrahim makes his way into the fire, the Lord decrees, Ya Nar, Ya Nar, O oh fire, be cool. But coolness would have frozen Ibrahim. So Allah Rabbul Izza put a conditional clause, Wa salamun ala Ibrahim, and keep Ibrahim at peace. So Ibrahim landed into the fire. And the fire subsided and eventually Ibrahim walked out. Not a hair on his head is hurt. And he lived a good long life. And in his old age, they asked him, Ibrahim, what was the best days of your life? He said, there in the fire. Ibrahim alayhi salam continued his da'wah. And the people resisted. And the, the, the local king, the, you know, the king of the place, Namrud, he heard of, of this incident. So he called him. Who is this Lord of yours? My Lord is the one that gives life and takes life. This arrogant king says, Ana uhri wa umit. I give life and I take life. Hey, I'll show you. Bring two prisoners. So they brought two prisoners. He killed one and he let the other one go. He goes, see, I gave life, I took life. But Ibrahim is too intelligent to get bogged down in these things, you know. No, I didn't mean it like that. This is, uh, he goes, Khalas, uh, uh, oh, so you want to compare to Allah? Khalas. He goes, Allah brings the sun up from the east. Bring it from the west. The disbeliever was flabbergasted. He was finished. What am I going to say to this? And for the rest of his life, he's a muhajir prophet. He went from you know, city to city and place to place, settled here and then resettled there and then came back here. And for the rest of his life, he's a muhajir prophet. And then he reaches old age and still his house, there's no child in the house. 80 plus and some narrations, some close to 100, there's still no child in his house. And then he eventually makes this dua. Oh Allah, give me a righteous one. And as the dua is uttered, the good news comes. We gave him the glad tidings of a righteous son. And then, so the first test was in his childhood da'wah, yeah? Now look here. So Allah Rabbul Izzah orders, take the child and the mother and go to that barren forsaken desert and leave them there and walk away. So imagine the sentiments of of this wife like have i done something wrong what why am i being left here and she runs after him ibrahim to whom are you leaving us why are you leaving us he doesn't say anything just keeps walking has allah ordered you to do this he nods so she says go allah rabbul izza will not let us go to waste oh allah i have left from my progeny in a unvegetated valley for miles on end there isn't a twig to shade under forsaken barren difficult harsh heartland i have forsaken my progeny there oh allah send some hearts of the people to come around them our mother hajar alayhi salam and ismail alayhi salam 
are there, the water pretty soon runs out, you know, her own milk runs out, what, what to give the child, the child starts to cry, the heat is, is scorching, can you imagine in the desert, no one, no one in, in the desert. And she runs up, she thinks she sees water or looks for a glimpse of hope, Safa and Marwa and does the seven laps that you do in, in Hajj. And the young child is there crying. So Allah Rabbul Izzah tells Jibreel, go Jibreel, at the foot of Ismail strike, bring out a water that will not cease till Qiyamah come. So this water came forth and the birds saw the water and they encircled around. The travelers saw the bird, they go, there must be water there. So they came and they found a lone woman with a little babe next to the water. And this is why the dua of Ibrahim is accepted. They haven't said, woman, move, we want the water. They come to her, can we settle around you? Yes, you can settle, but the water is mine. You don't negotiate when you're a lone woman in the desert. But her, and where's her strength coming from? Uh, Allah is with me. So they stayed. Uh, a little community developed. The young Ismail grew up amidst this tribe. And the Quran says, when he reached an age where he can partake with his dad. Allah Rabbul Izzah tells Ibrahim alayhi salam, now go back. That son has grown. He's a young man. Slaughter that son. So he comes to the son, a son that he hasn't seen all his, his years. And he says, I have seen in my dream. Then see what is your verdict. Father, do as you have been commanded. You will find me bear it patiently. And then imagine the scene, subhanallah. The father's holding the hand of the son, in one hand a knife, in the other hand the son. Where are you going? I am going to sacrifice the son. So the Quran says, And when they had both surrendered to my decree, and he had put him, Lil Jabin, his forehead on the ground, Nadayna, we called out to him, O oh, Ibrahim, your dream has been fulfilled, and he has sacrificed a sheep instead. We do not want the life of your son. This father of the prophets, this beloved of Allah Rabbul Izzah. Allah Rabbul Izzah now orders him, build a house. Build my house here as the ho first house of worship and as a monument of your dedication and Tawheed. So until Qiyamah come, people rejoice and celebrate and remember that a Muwahid like Ibrahim lived and one who gave his all in everything for the sake of deen. So Ibrahim alayhi salam built the Kaaba with Ismail and subhanallah what an honor it is for a father and son to work together for the cause of Allah. To build the religion of Allah, to build the house of Allah. And they make dua, oh Allah accept this from us. So Allah Rabbul Izza says, O oh Ibrahim now proclaim the Hajj amidst men, they will come to you. Where? In the desert, who's around? Nobody. But proclaim the Hajj Ibrahim. You do the call, we will make it reach. So Ibrahim alayhi salam calls out to people to Hajj, to come. And Subhan al Khaliq, you want to see the result of the dua of Ibrahim. You go to Hajj, millions upon millions strong to the sacred house year after year. And answer, to the call that Ibrahim alayhi salam made. 